Hi, my name is Kmod. This podcast is brought to you by Machuwa Tivet College and it's specifically to income tax and six for South African Tivet Colleges. In this presentation, I'd like to deal with the calculation of tax liability for natural persons. I hope to deliver it in various parts and for ease of reverence, I'd like to refer to this part as part one. In part one, I'd like to tackle the calculation of gross income. I'm going to look at the question paper, which was written in November 2016. Question 4 of that question paper required card dates to determine the tax liability of a natural person. I'm going to use the Excel spreadsheet to illustrate the calculation of gross income. Without wasting your time, I quickly want us to go to the question paper. It's essentially question 4. It related to Tipto, age 55. We took early retirement on the 31st of August 2014. Unfortunately, Pete Tiptoe passed away on the 1st of November 2014. He was married in commercial property. That aspect is important in determining certain items, tax implications of certain items that will be classified as gross income. Card dates were required to determine the tax liability for the tax year and the 28 February 2015. Let's quickly go to the spreadsheet to calculate gross income. I'm going to use uh, two columns. The first column is dedicated to what is referred to as lump sums. I quickly want to highlight the lump sums. I've already taken those lump sums from your question paper. So those items highlighted in green are referred to as lump sums. They are specifically included in the definition of gross income by what we call special inclusions. Gratuity and accumulated leave are referred to as severance benefits. They included by paragraph D of the definition of gross income. Remember, before you can even classify something as an item as gross income, it has to meet the definition of gross income. Other items meet the definition of gross income because they are specifically included by what we call the special inclusion. Um, lump sum from pension fund are referred to as retirement funds. Retirement funds are specifically included by paragraph E to the definition of uh, gross income. Without wasting your time, I've clearly indicated that lump sums are communicated in separate item as opposed to other items. A reason being lump sums will be taxed from a different uh, uh, tax rate and a different tax table will be applied in taxing lump sums and, and, and taxing other items. Let's quickly go to the question paper and obtain figures relating to lump sums. So we're given gratuity, accumulated leave, and pension lump sum. The amount of the gratuity is 110. I'm going to put it there, 110. I also remember the amount of the accumulated leave, it's 8,000. Remember, I took this directly from a question paper, so if you're not certain, you can quickly go to the question paper. The amount specifically relating to pension lump sum was given as 580,000. So these are easy marks. Remember, you want to end this marks if you take them to that column. You clearly need to separate them from other items. They're still, in, they're still included in the definition of gross income, but because they're text at a different text table, we show them or we reflect them in, in, a, in a different uh, column. Moving along swiftly, let's continue with the determination or calculation of amount relating to other items. Firstly, I'd like to start with salary. Let's get the information relating to salary. Tiptoe and salary of 16000 per month. Remember, we need to determine what we call the annual equivalent. We cannot just simply multiply the 16000 by 12 
because Tipto might not have necessarily worked for 12 months. In actual fact, this is the case as Tipto retired on the 31st of August 2014. Remember, our year of assessment ends on the 28th of February 2015. Let's quickly go to the slide where we are going to determine the months that we're going to take into account and determining the annual equivalent specifically relating to salary. Tipto would have earned the salary for six months. The salary would have been determined by taking the first month would have been 1 March 2014. That's referred to the commencement of the year of assessment. As Tipto retired on the 31st of August, Tipto would have earned the salary from 1st of March 2014 until the 31st of August 2014. If you do your calculation, you'll realize that that is equivalent of six months. So we're going to take the salary. It was a monthly salary. And for us to determine the annual equivalent relating to salaries, we're going to take 16,000 we're going to multiply that by six months it's actually a cardinal scene to assume that all other items relate to 12 months you need to go to the question make the assessment by taking into account dates such as the retirement dates and um, and another other dates uh, as well to determine the annual equivalent of salaries. The next item in line is pension annuity. It's specifically included in the definition of gross income. It's included by paragraph A of the definition of gross income. We're given the 4,000 per month. Once more again, we want to determine the annual equivalent. We're not simply going to multiply by 12 because remember, Tipto was employed um, uh, from the beginning of the year of assessment and he only retired on the 31st of August. Pension annuity will only kick in after the taxpayer has retired. So for us to determine the months that in which Tipto and the pension annuity, we'll have to consider the retirement date. So Tipto would have end uh, the pension annuity subsequent to the retirement date. I quickly want to take you to the slide where we did the determination of the months that we're going to take into account relating to the pension annuity. Tipto would have earned uh, the pension annuity for two months from September 2014, that's the date after retirement, until the 30th of October 2014 that's the date of the uh, that's the date of um, the date of it, it should actually read as the date of death and not the date of retirement so it should actually read as the date of death so tiptoe would have end a pension annuity from 1st of September 2014 uh, tiptoe passed on on the 1st of November uh, 2014 therefore he, Tipto would have earned the pension annuity for two months. The pension annuity was 4,000, so it will be calculated as 4,000 times two. There you go. Remember the total of that column was, will be communicated in that column as gross income. The next item in line is bonus. Bonus certainly meets the definition of gross income. It should be included in gross income as it arose from Tiptoe's employment. No explanation whatsoever and no complicated calculations. 16,000, there you go. The next item in line is called housing subsidy. Housing subsidy is included in the definition of gross income. Housing subsidy is what is called a fringe benefit and it's specifically included by paragraph I in the definition of uh, gross income. We want to determine the annual equivalent, Tipto and 1,300. Remember, Tipto would have earned uh, this fringe benefit while he was employed. Since the fringe benefit is 
attributable to his employment. Tipto was employed from the 1st of March 2014 until the 31st of August 2014. Let me quickly go to the slide for ease of reference. I'm going to go to the slide. That's the housing subsidy. Tipto would have earned the housing subsidy for six months while he was employed. And that is from the 1st of March 2014. That's referred to as the commencement of the year of assessment until the 31st of August 2014. That's the date of retirement. And that came to six months. So the housing subsidy was 1,300. We're going to take 1,300, multiply, oops, 300, multiply by the six months. Apologies. There you go. The next item is interest received. Uh, this is one of the items that we're going to divide by three because TIPTO is married in community of property. For tax purposes, when a taxpayer is married in community of property, we're going to divide what we refer to as um, passive income by three. To cut the story short, you're going to divide interest received, dividends received, and rental income from fixed property by two when a taxpayer is married in community of property. Essentially, when you divide by two, the other half will be taxable in the hands of the taxpayer, and the other half will be taxable in the hands of the spouse of the taxpayer. So let's do calculations relating to interest. Tip to and 28,000. I'm going to take the amount of 28,000, and I'm going to divide it by two. The next item in line is live lump sum from live policy. Remember, if an amount doesn't meet the definition of gross income, it will not be subject to, to, to tax. Uh, lump sum from live policy is capital in nature. It does not ar arise from trade. It does not arise from employment of tiptoe. Therefore, the amount won't be included in gross income. It might be possibly subject to capital gains tax. However, for the purpose of our studies, we do not calculate or we do not determine capital gains tax. Therefore, we're going to exclude that amount in uh, gross income. However, the exclusion means that you must indicate it with a zero. Do not completely exclude it from uh, your calculations without showing a zero because if you do, you uh, lose valuable marks. So you need to write the description down as if you're going to include it and you're going to indicate it by zero. Zero indicates that the amount is kept in nature. Let's look at the second item in line. It's rental income. We're going to determine the months that we're going to apply to determine the annual equivalent. Um, Tipto would have earned rental income from the commencement of the year of assessment, which is 1 March 2014, until the date on which he passed on. Remember, rental income has got nothing to do with employment, so it will still continue even after the date he is retired. But it will cease at the date of the taxpayer's death. I quickly want to go to the calculation slide. I came to eight months, and eight months was determined by taking 1st of March, that is commencement of the year of assessment, until the 31st of October 2014. That came to eight months. The amount of rental was 2,500. I'm going to take the 2,500, but I want to use a bracket because I'm going to divide it by two. I'm going to multiply that by eight. We've since established that he ended for eight months. I'm going to divide it by two. I just quickly want to explain the principle of dividing by two. Uh, the Act specifically says that if it's uh, 
uh, rental income from fixed property will divide by two. Even though we're not specifically told that this rental income is attributable to fixed property, it is the practice in TVET that when a taxpayer earns rental income, we divide it by two. Despite the fact that uh, it, it's not attributable, it might not be attributable to fixed property. As long as it's rental income, we divide by two. Uh, I want you to end marks, so I'm gonna follow the practice in the TVET college. There you go. Moving along swiftly, those items were taken into account. I already dealt with those items. The dividends received, it's included in the definition of uh, gross income. Remember, we did that the tree and a fruit analogy. The dividends would be a tree in this case, and the investment in shares would be, I mean, the dividends would be the fruit, and the investment in shares that end dividends would be the tree. Uh, to cut the story short, the dividends would be included in gross income. The amount of dividends is 5,000. We're going to divide it by two. Remember, because the taxpayer is married in community of property. The last item we're going to tackle is a fringe benefit, where, which, which is attributable to contributions to medical aid fund um, incurred by the employer on behalf of the employee. So we're going to take the amount of 15,000 we're going to include it in gross income, as we've already mentioned that fringe benefits will be included in gross income. There aren't any other items relating to gross income, either to your lump sums or your other items. That amount of gross income takes into account the sum of that column. And it doesn't include that column, as I've already mentioned that we're going to use two different uh, text tables. This is where my presentation ends. Uh, please, if you've got any question, post them on WhatsApp or my email address. Thank you.